Hello everyone, welcome to DMB II Live for October 7th, 2017. The highlight for this video is available in the DMV II Live Highlights playlist. Keep in mind, stocks and strategies discussed here are for information only. Do not treat any information provided here as investment advice or recommendation. It is up to the individual investor to perform due diligence prior to investing in any company. And here are the symbols covered this week. Feel free to pause the video and look up the symbols to learn more about the underlying businesses. At least this week, uh, I want to talk about what's a um, shop, S-H-O-P. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, this uh, Citroen Research um, released out a video along with a bunch of uh, press talking about uh, how shop could potentially be the pyramid scheme or some type of uh, scam like uh, uh, Herbalife. How they were promoting millionaires and paying uh, YouTubers and other <coughs> uh, people to pump the stock. What's the actual symbol? That's S H O P. Yeah, it doesn't come up with that. I don't know why. Shopify. Oh, there you go. Shopify. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yep. So the overall, the company looks like it's uh, it's got like something close to seventy something percent uh, growth in revenue um, for this year so far, and uh, at least the twelve trillion months, and. Um, a lot of people have believe this is potentially the next, you know, uh, Alibaba or Amazon or some type of those uh, uh, e-commerce platform. So it's actually down uh, something close to like twenty, almost like twenty percent since its uh, peak. That was like two, three days ago. It's a um, so opportunity, huh? So for people who actually just, uh, yeah, just you know, it's had a big down on high volume, a volume despite. Where's the rationale there? Hmm? Amazon, Amazon competition. Oh no, the rationale is that uh, the Citroen research came out, essentially the research group that talks about, oh, um, we did this research and based on what we found is that potentially Shopify is a scam oh, in, a, in, in the sense that uh, they were pumping uh, people to advertise and you know, how you can be a millionaire by subscribing with us and sell your products here and essentially you're just wholesaling other people's goods in their platform, right? Um, so. I, I think you know if people are actually selling and based on their revenue, they are generating revenue for other people sell. So uh, maybe it's a little far fetched that they actually say, "Oh, you can be a millionaire by doing this." Um, but I do think if the business model works, it works. Um, so yeah, so this is one of it. And then the other one that I want to uh, add on to our radar is the Unity. I remember uh, a few few weeks ago. Um, Another uh, value investor guy over there. Um, that's UIT. Yeah. Uh, add another I. Add another I. And then space group. Yep. Yeah, UIT. Yeah. Yep. It's a. That's got a lot of press of late. Yeah, I do have this. Uh, yeah. For a long time. You know, before they broke up from Windstream. Oh, okay. I've had it for a long time. So, uh, like big dividend. Uh, you see it there. Uh, where is it? Yeah, no, it's like 15, 15, 15%. 15%. Yeah, so 15.65% yield. So I, it's a mega yield for sure. I mean, that's top two. Did you pick some up? You know, yeah, I, I actually picked some up this week. Um, and uh, I, uh, I bought like calls in it at strike of 12.5 uh, in the money. Um, Pay something like $4 something for it. Actually, not this week. I think towards the end of last week, that's when I um, picked it up. What was it? Yeah, I don't remember, but um, yeah, so I got in the money and the re rationale behind it is still a little bit speculative in a way because we don't know what, how far the wind stream is going to drag down uh, Unity, especially with the triple lease um, um, and 70%, uh, about 70% of the revenue, come, Unity's revenue comes from that lease, right? So uh, I remember the auto value investor was uh, uh, mentioning how even if Windstream does not, uh, is not able to uh, maintain business, at least the service uh, customers will still need that infrastructure in place to service all their customers, right? So that might potentially still be a good way to restructure or stru uh, making new deals uh, out of the uh, leasing. Uh, it's a REIT, so they get the money from uh, that's what they uh, yeah. real estate operations. So that, that's, that's uh, something else I think that's You can see the historic lows there. Uh, yeah. You know, it's the, the yeah. double bottom here. From are they around the world or country? This REIT? 
uh, if you scroll down. Oh, no, just a, here's, a, here's the profile here. U.S. and Mexico. <coughs> Fiber inputs, hours, consumer, the company days. That is actually kind of interesting. But the PE, I mean, the. Uh, oh, this description, yeah. Form the. Uh, who are the group that it's in? Yeah, it's the fiber optic broadband. Let's see, where is it? Why did they go down? Oh, it's trading since totally split from one stream that it will be I think their asset is still um, worth a lot more than its current stock price so mm -hmm. this is basically based off its um, valuation on its intrinsic value so whether or not uh, uh, Windstream is going to drag this thing uh, unity down I don't know right. um, so there's still a speculative element to it mm -hmm. so that's why I just bought the calls in it for like as long as like, 200 something days was it 400 something days? Way up. Yes. Oh, okay. Nobody knows. Mean, it's just what you yeah. think. That's yeah, I mean, what if, if, if I right? get it, I don't then, know, but that's what you think. Yeah, if I get it, then that's um, what, like 16, if they, assuming they don't cut the dividends, right? That's like 15, 16% dividend for that long term stock that I'm, I will be holding. If not, you know, I, I waste away a few thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's the money I can afford to lose, right? So. Do you sell calls against your. No. Long call. No, you don't. I just buy it all right because I, I want to own it. It's 15%. That's why I buy uh, yeah, in the money. 60. So it's in the money 12 12.5 is right. So it has yeah, intrinsic yeah. value of at least um, uh, almost three bucks in it. At least when I got it, it was uh, close to uh, um, three bucks and yeah. some some change. Plus, oh, yeah, like, think intrinsic value of like maybe almost a dollar uh, or a dollar something. So that's just money I'm paying in case it does go to, go to zero, the maximum I can use. So the way the position is only calls or stock as well? Only calls. So let me ask you, so I'm embarrassed to ask this question. How would you collect the dividend that you just own? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is for like short term, I'm, I won't be collecting dividends. But if this thing does remain, um, in, in, I guess the operation remains. Mm -hmm. And when I own the shares, that's when I actually start collecting it. So this is planning for acquisition, not really buying it now. Because if I buy it now, I take on the risk of it does go down a lot further. I don't care about the dividend at that point. You're losing in its right. actual it's capital. Right. Kind of like, defined risk. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, it's by that point, if the uh, everything's settled down and then the business is intact, then I will own it. If not, then I might just get rid of the cost if it's profitable. If not, uh, what else? Uh, it would just expire worthless, right? So those are my options. Are you, is it January? What month? Uh, I, I can pull that out. Well, I think you mentioned January 2019, I think, right? Yeah. This mm -hmm. month. So, uh, I think I, get, I got it in 2018. 2019. Well, I mean, there is a, let's face it, there's going to be some May of 2018. What? That's 223 days out. May 20, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. How much premium over intrinsic did you have to pay? Um, I I got right now. I can tell you what it is right now. Right now, um, it's a uh, four dollar and fifteen cents for the twelve point five call contract. So minus that, that's about uh, three three dollars and twenty cents. A little over a dollar premium. Yeah. All right. No, actually, it's about it's about a dollar something. Yeah, a dollar and twenty cents. So is that a temporary way? Uh, yep. On your next. Okay. Uh, to follow up on that shop, because um, Motley Fools really recommended that um, to their high end customers, they recommended it at about twenty some dollars. To their low end customers, they recommend around sixty. So um, anyway, they're investigating and researching. They sent something out, and they're 
letter or their email this week. We're looking into this because you know this was their you know, Amazon there. and all this. They gave the they so they're so, researching that. The other I mean, thing. I guess that's the question: Did they know what this other short shop? Came up with. You say, "Oh, well, that's news to us. We didn't know it." Or, "Oh, yeah, we knew that." It's just not. Well, I think they, I think they would. You know, they have a lot of people in it, and if it's a Ponzi scheme or it's going to tank, I think they're going to put a warning out, get out, because you know they're oh, going to look yeah, bad. Oh, that might really tell. So, <laughs> so, um, they, but that was I got that on Friday. The other one, because I told you they mentioned some again. I, I get their lower newsletter. You're the cheaper, so I'm the cheaper, cheaper guy, guy, yeah. But you know we know each other. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> uh, but they mention uh, workplace and they're very high on it. I think it's like hundred and four dollars now. Um, workplace what's work, that? it's it's a one of those um, I would say it's a it, it's dealing no, with the cloud. Right? It yeah he has it WSI. He had it up there a minute ago. WSI. What is it WSI? Yes. WSI. I think it's W-Day. W-D-A-Y? Day. That's work day. Yeah, work day. Okay, that's what they, no, I'm yeah. sorry, work day. All right. They're high on this one. They sent that out on front. Now, again, probably they told their high-end customers about this at $30. Um, but they, I think they recommended it around 80 or 70s when I first saw it. But they sent out, they're still high on this. Um, Xavier shared a website with me and Again, on these teasers we get, if you go to www.gumshoestock, you can, you can go in there and you can also subscribe to it, but there are free uh, analysis. It's good. Yeah, it's they, it, it gives you all the newsletters and their teasers. And so you could see when, when Motley Fools or when Paul Manafort or all these people go into investing on these companies when they teased them. Um, oh, oh, is it corporate investigation? <laughs> no, it's 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 gumshoe stock. Oh, gumshoe stock. Oh, you said www. So. Well, yeah, just gumshoe stock. I, you gotta go to the internet, but I guess gumshoe stock. Com. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Gum gumshoe. There. There it is. See it up there, gumshoe stock. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 There's free membership. See the right. You sign up for the free membership. No, no, I'm not. I'm. Yeah, I just go up. on. You can go on, and you can see the, the information. I mean, it, if if he hits free so member, he won't become a member if you hit that. And then you just you just go up, please go up here, and you see the this newsletters alphabetically. Okay. Or uh, oh, try the try this try this teasers tracking teasers teaser tracking. And then if you go down, I think there you go. You got. So the, lo the latest is it looks like uh, April of 2017, the various folks that were teasing on companies there. So you see the newsletter, like Oxford. See, and, right now, I see these dates. My, and they look, the latest was at Forum, Minko Scholar. Was, Minko Scholar was at Forum, Minko Scholar was So that's the latest one here. So if you keep scrolling down. Yeah, it's a freebie. Yeah, it's a freebie. I mean, it gives you an so idea. So you have to pay to see the, the precious stuff. But you can see the history there. They go 16. And, and so how, oh, yeah, how do I use this job? Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's a it's a way to basically if sure. if, if if a company is pushing something uh -huh. and they're teasing you on it, you can see who it is. Like apparently on whoop. Yeah. Okay, can you can go back to that other page. Uh, I was going to. Okay, you want to go back? Just go down. Just scroll back down. Yeah. Okay, so slow down, stop. Spotify was in there. Yeah, I, that's what I was going to say. Uh, like fourth down from the top. Go up. Shopfly. There's Motley Crue. Yeah, See, Dave, Dave is right. There's a link on the right. Should I press on the link? No, no. Don't, pick, don't press on the links. Okay. Just 
But you'd see when they recommended it at 48. That was January. La yeah. yeah. This is Motley Fool. Yeah, that was right. Motley Fool. Yeah. Um, see Paul Manafort down there a little bit? He, extreme I'm fortunes. Manafort. He's the guy in the tank now with the Russian Pan Paul Ma Manafort. Man 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 that's a, that's a yeah. different Paul. It's a different yeah, not Manafort. Not I'm sorry. <laughs> Fake news again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but see, he, he mentioned one there. But you, you could, it just, if you get the teasers from those companies, because if you, I get all these, you know, emails yeah, and teasers, yeah. but you can go in here and say, okay, what, what is this, what, what are they pushing? And, and who, when did they get into it? Um, so it's sort of a, sort of a tool to use. Right, you can measure them too. I'm right, it looks like they're pretty much all winners, right? Everybody's <coughs> in the green. Yeah. I, I, think all, all go, I think it's sorted. If you scroll down, right, then you have losers. Oh, that's oh, all it's all in order. Yeah, the losers come. Oh now there are a few skink, you know, skunks, you know, but look at this losers here. Oh, well, that's a hundred percent lot. Oh, Stanford. <laughs> Uh, he's got a bad reputation, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Reinforced now. Reinforced. Yeah, everybody knows does. But I think, I think, Hector, if you keep going down, it goes back to FY uh, 2014. <coughs> I think that's... Wow. Yeah. So you really get an idea. It's just an analysis. I mean, because, yeah. you know, to... It's a, it's a track. It, it's a way right. to. It's a way to. You know, if you're getting these teasers, it's a, a system, an organization principle, which you know, it's cheap, it's freebie, but you, know, you can jump yeah. up yeah. that. You know, right, and if you want to, if you, if you what's two thousand? Yeah, if you want to, if you want to go, um, you know, and get the prescription, I don't know what it costs, but. But it's anyway, it's something to check out. Right, I mean, that's what we want to hear. I mean, everybody just has to decide for themselves, of course. But so, John, have you had a business where you use this? I'll, yeah, that, that, that company, STM, I told you about, okay. that get, Xavier found them on here, that, okay. st that MEMS technology. Yeah, right. In fact, when that guy, I'll tell you, that he recommended it, or I got in around 14 and a half. It's up to 19-something now. Yeah, um, he, was, he was recommending it to his clients at $6. And if you go on that uh, on on uh, Yahoo Finance, he is just hammering that. Thing. They they keep that advertisement where he he does his his video and he won't tell you what it is. But Xavier said, "Yeah, that's what it is, John. It's the stems." And so I went in and he found it on here. So, um, and then uh, I did pick some shares up of Square. It's just on a move. Yeah. I don't know where it'll happen. I mean, it's not a value play, but. Who knows? Maybe it'll be the next Shopify or Workday. Yeah. S like, Q. Could pick up on it. You can, yeah. you know, off the races. Uh, I mean, this is well. It's uh, good, uh, been nothing but up. So, but it's you know, it's a new issue, and who knows when they offer their shares, they can sell it in insiders. It might come back down. We know that uh, Dorsey, the guy who started Twitter, started this company. So he's cold. CEO of both right now. Yeah. But this one's doing very well for it. I mean, Jesus, this is... Well, for now. It hasn't been around that long. I mean, look at this chart. This, this, uh, it's a good yeah. chart. It's a Vince chart, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, he would be hesitant to buy right now. Int Intel's doing really well, too. I don't know if anybody's following Intel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's broken out. It's, you know... Look at uh, back to the uh, dot com bus. I don't think this goes back that far, but it's come up to the same levels that it uh, busted from back in the late 90s. And Don, I got one for you. Question uh, uh, Farmers of Apple Maddox jumped from $25 to $28. And I think that I, you know, it's very f thinly traded. <laughs> it's, um, uh, I think, uh, oh, who's this? He's not here. The, you have a symbol? That's, uh, yeah, I think it's FPAM. No, FPM, F, FB, PA. Frank, Bravo, F, Apple, no, FB. 
PA. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's PA. That was one of those. And, uh, wow, average volume, 240. Well, it's, it's very hard to get in here. I mean, you, you put something down, and it takes about two months to get in. Um, God, what's the guy's name? He's not here. Small fella. He's big in it. He does banks too. He's in it as well. Oh, you think Jay? Jay, yeah, Jay's in here. But yeah, Don, he hasn't been it, back for months. J Jay, I mean, Don, have you heard anything about? That? I mean, I was sort of surprised. My radar screen. I've never heard of it. Okay. All right, is that it for you, John? Yeah, that's it. Don. Dan. <laughs> and, uh, Close enough. All right. Um, Thanks for keeping this straight because I need a lot of help. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm looking at Owens, Owens Corning, OC, it's a symbol. And they pop because of the uh, hurricanes. Uh, so it's kind of get you know, a little bit late to the oh, party. Okay. But this is still a solid stock. <clears throat> and the company's been around forever. Um, institutional ownership, 99%. <laughs> All these stocks have such up-moving charts. And it's, it's a, just throw a dart at the poor, you, you're a winner, right? It's one of those big markets. Well, where well there's been days, I mean, we, we've had periods in our investing yeah. history where that was absolutely true. And then, the you know, the yeah. it stops and it goes the other way. Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as it doesn't plunge, I mean, as a stop is yeah. one thing. So I, I just find it a pretty solid company that I'm, I'm looking at, but I, I haven't bought it. Again, you know, it's, it's a bit rich right now. But, yeah. Uh, they, it doesn't mean, that, you know, they can still, because of the, there's a, I don't know how much of an influence that, you know, Harvey and Norm is going to have, particularly Harvey with them, but that's why, you know, it went up recently and, um, that's going to be that issue is going to be around for years. So actually, right now they haven't even profited from it. They're so, going to though. So the so the hurricane, the disaster stocks right now. Obviously, are General Motors selling uh, for uh, cars that were Ford, yeah, replace Home, Home Ford Depot, replaced the, Lowe's. Uh, Home Depot's Lowe's. That's right. Yeah, um, but I'm looking at the suppliers to that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. So that's it. Okay, is it? All right. Yeah. Okay, you're next. Okay. Um, so one stock that I was interested in, I bought a little bit, but um, not a whole lot, was um, it's HMNY. And they recently purchased a company called MoviePass. So um, HM? HM New York NY. Oh, okay. And they recently bought Movie Pass. Uh, and as a Mary. H M N Y. So there we go. That one? No. Wow, ten percent. Yeah. That one? Oh wow, that's one. Why is that pop? It is really pop. Um but anyway, so Movie Pass is <coughs> a company and you can it's a subscription base and you can um, pay ten dollars a month, nine ninety five. And you can see a movie a day in theaters um, with this subscription. Um, so that seemed to be like a really uh, great deal. And I think they're going to get a lot of subscribe subscribers. Uh, the, the company was not owned by HMNY um, prior to a couple months ago. Uh, and they were planning to go um, public, uh, release their IPO um, early next year. And so that was something that was really only um, that I was tracking because I, I like IPOs. Um, especially like of this nature. Um, so did you get in? Well, I, I got in. I mean, I got in late on this, and then um, they're not going to be doing an IPO because they're they're 100 percent owned now by HMNY. Interesting charge. You see well, that, that, that that peak there, and then comes back down, and then wasn't wasn't this also the one the uh, the company that AMC had a lawsuit mm -hmm. going against them? They were like they're mm -hmm. stealing their customers. Mm, yeah, like, yeah, because AMC was planning to have some sort of similar subscription base, but um, MoviePass beat them to the punch, so AMC is not happy about it. Um, so. so not for the faint of heart. No, but like I mean, I, I think there's still a lot of potential. I mean, a lot of shares, four million, four million per so a day. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you, a lot of my uh, colleagues mentioned about using this 
as an alternative to uh, actually buying movie tickets. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Because ten dollars, I mean, that's basically one movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's really good screaming do you deal. do you think though, like the going streaming with Netflix and all these other things will affect these guys? Oh, maybe, but it's they're completely different experiences. So like, so you've got Netflix as your home relax, R right? Like date night is more like this. This. But know. I mean, do you? Do, do you guys think, I mean, I go to movies once in a while, but, mm -hmm. and I don't use Netflix, but mm -hmm. do you think the days of AMC and going to a movie are going to be greatly hurt? Yeah. Or do you think it's yeah. already stopped? No, you I think, think it, yeah, the opposite. I mean, I think because it was slumping, like the attendance to theaters down like 20% or something like that. And then, um, with this, I think it's going to increase it, and I think it's going to be good for the AMC. I mean, it's not great because AMC didn't wasn't like the front runner on it, so right. they missed out on that opportunity. But they are going to have like the benefit of the concession sales, um, so they're going to get popcorn and sodas and whatever else people buy, and they go to the. Oh, movies. they'll make this. These guys will get a part of that cut. No, I don't. I don't no. believe they will. No, but um, they're so just. They'll, they're, but AMC is going to benefit by people. You know, more like people higher intended. More yeah, people yeah. going to the movies. Yeah. Right. So, okay. so it's, yeah. the, it's the concept of trying to get customer into the door right? yeah. before you even you know, start selling the little things here and could, there. Could <laughs> these could these <laughs> folks though, with their with their uh, deal on tickets, mm -hmm. could that be influenced also on food products in the movie theater? I think they're completely unrelated. Because it. Like when you go to a sports event, let's say you go to minor league baseball game, Sam will tell you, we can see a ball player right over there on the wall, and I can pay $17 instead of going to Nationals and pay $75 and be up in the bleachers. Mm -hmm. But they both play major league baseball price for food. Right. So I just wonder, you get you in there cheaply, but food's expensive there. It's still going to be the same. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's why AMC isn't pursuing them because they need to get the audience. Yeah, they did try to pursue them at first, and then yeah. I think they in terms of business, they, they, some people they need to get people to go yeah, to the movies there first. <laughs> first. Yeah, they make they make more money off their food, just like a bar, a restaurant makes more money off the liquor yeah. because you can up the cost on that. You can't have the cost exactly. on tickets, but you can up the cost on food. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I think it wasn't this. Earlier this week or last week, that Apple B did something similar. It's like one dollar margaritas, and then you go in and you buy food. It's, they give you one dollar margaritas. <laughs> heard about that. So that was my my only play this week. So that's it for you, Keith. Yes, sir. Right. Tom, you're next. I uh, I haven't done that much except I've been reading uh, a couple of things. <sighs> I don't know if you're all following Tesla. Yeah, he's right here. <laughs> Ian, Ian's, Ian's cousin's right here. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to give some facts on that. And this Model Three, of course, not going to make five thousand cars a cycle. But last quarter, they made the Model Three. They made only two hundred and sixty. Model threes, right. and he was supposed to be up to a thousand. Or so, and I'm talking three months. They made 260 cars, and the article talks about how half of that now is they're just doing it by hand <laughs> instead of mass production. And yet the stock didn't suffer, did it? No, because they're dead. <laughs> He's in so many other things, which I'm gonna I'm gonna raise a question on that because he's human. And you can start so many juggling, and I wonder how long he can keep that up. Tom, Tom, I think, though, I might argue with that. He's kind of superhuman. Well, he's well, the kind of guy who works 100 hours a week and uh, on home and work all day. A super salesman, con man like our president. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, except he's for green energy, though. As well, I mean, it may be, <laughs> but he's still 100% con man. Well, uh, that's how people work on right. Right. Anyways, they're still making some cars, but they're also involved in a lot of ecological Absolutely. factors. So that may people be People love part. the product. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so it. there's other aspects than just no, Tesla as a car company. However, I do... 
I, I do want to add something here that compared to General Motors, I think General Motors is making, uh, they delivered last year 10 million vehicles. They make 27,000 cars a day. General Motors. Well, they have robots too in some of their places. It, oh, it's all, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but yeah. It's on going back a year, that's their charts. Blue is in Tesla, red is in GM. Oh, yeah. It, it's an interesting. Yeah. It went up 69% in the last 12 months. Now, GM has uh, come up by uh, last six plus. Look at that. Every last three months, GM has come up. It's already taken last three months. GM has all taken that's okay. Yeah. Because of the electric car. Uh, of the well, they're, they're doing a lot of that. Almost all the car manufacturers are getting into the electric cars, so we'll see how that plays out in you know, the future here. Yeah, GM has really took off. I have GM and it's really took off the last uh, yeah. uh, week or so. I mean, this is an amazing Tom, if you stay on the car thing, though, about like Tesla being a niche that people like, here's a ticker RACE, and this oh, yeah, is yeah. this yeah. is Ferrari, yeah. and I think that's a very expensive car, and they they have a certain clientele. But there was a young man named John. He's not, he hasn't been here in a while. He recommended this to us, uh, seeing it in uh, in value uh, IDP mm -hmm. at about sixty dollars, sixty five dollars, and it went up to a high of one twenty. But I don't know if that's correct. If it's that ninety-five now, I thought it was like a hundred and something. Yeah, that's interesting. I have one twelve here. Yeah, I think it's one twelve, Hector. I don't know really? why that's yeah. down. I'm looking at Hector. I have. I'm. I'm on you. You Yahoo, have bit. Yahoo yeah. Finance. Yeah. yeah. R A C race. <laughs> you have oh. bit race. Uh, two races. Yeah, the <laughs> top one is one. No, that's not it. That's the throw. It comes up. Go to the other one. Uh, it's British so that might be in pounds. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> race. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's, it. that's the ticker. What's the difference there, too? You had B I T. But anyway, that that that's just an idea on cars. You know, having a niche and yeah, a certain clientele is always going to buy these guys. So, after you, Tom, was that it for you? Uh, well, I wanted to do two more things, but I'll, I don't want to waste time too much. But I must say that Bolivia, I, I go down to Latin America several times a year, and Bolivia had a economic crisis recently. They were one of the most stablest currencies in South America up until this year. Bolivia. Bolivia. Uh, the exchange rate hardly varied. However, all of a sudden they had an economic crisis huh. and they attributed it to Bitcoin. Oh. Wow. What was happening before, their economy deals with minerals and natural resources and coca. And the market, the, the government has a big hand in that for all those businesses. For years and years, they were keeping the money in the country. So they were buying land, or they were buying stores, or buying auto dealers, and they were giving jobs to people. Bitcoin came down there, and now some of these influential people are going to use Bitcoin so they can move the money out of the country. Ooh. And this has resulted in an economic crisis for the country because they're no longer keeping the money in the country. Could the same thing happen here? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, Bolivia is very strict on monetary controls, just like the United States. They have the same limit. You can take ten thousand in. You can take ten thousand out. But if you go any dollar more, you got to fill out forms and answer questions. Just like, just yes. like the states. They picked up that same trick. Oh, yes. And now, for them, the 
drug dealers and <coughs> these people yeah. for getting the money out of the country, and all of a sudden, they're having an economic problem. This can be replicated almost in any country in the world yeah. now. I, th I think it's going to benefit a lot of the first world countries because uh, what I've noticed is that a lot of those third world countries, they accumulate wealth and they want to put it in a place where they can invest in the world. And most of the time, they want to put it into the U.S. markets or some European market and right. just because it's less volatile and companies are generally uh, more secure because, you know, we have all these regulations and the SEC uh, betting companies, right? So I, I, at least uh, I've noticed um, a lot of the, um, uh, this is what I believe, is that a lot of the people are trying to figure out ways to invest in the U.S. markets and then channeling Bitcoins through U.S. markets and then invest it through that channel. Could be through relatives or through other people that they know in the country. That's the easiest way to do it. So is there a way that the governments can, well, we are in general, China trying to put some government restrictions on the usage of Bitcoin, is that? Well, yes, is they're trying possible to, to mandate it for the, 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 the trying, government to regulate it? They came up with their, uh, their own version of it, blockchain. I think that the Bolivia could do their Bolivian uh, Bitcoin or something like that? I don't think they've got the economic power to do that. Oh. <clears throat> but since you bring up Tanabe, if you bring up Bolivia, you know, I think they're the largest provider of lithium, correct? Lithium uh, they are the third. There's three third. countries in the world that have high lithium. And one is China, one is Arch uh, Chile, Chile, and the other one is Bolivia. Which is what the electric Bolivia has a significant resource in lithium, but the government is not friendly to right. foreign countries That's coming exactly in right. and doing the mining. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is an electric vehicle domain that they can obviously grow. But you're right, they, 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 they disenfranchise people who come in from other countries trying to mine them because they fear that they're going to exploited they oh, yeah, well, profits what they've done and, and I think they should start doing it here but they're not going to for political reasons about 30 or 40 percent of the cars the cars not the big trucks but uh, small cars they've converted to natural gas and it's much cheaper for the people to use natural gas and they don't have the refining production problems. They don't have a lot of other things. And for about three hundred dollars, you can convert your car. Yeah, Blue, Blue Dickens, the uh, guy, well, I guess, I was pushing that. Uh, don't avail for the last couple of three years, five years. But maybe it will take off. Uh, it is an infrastructure change. It's a political change. It's too much heavy problems. And. It's very interesting because China's government is very efficient. For example, we were talking about a maglev transportation going from Washington to New York to Boston, and they're going to say, oh, that's going to take 10 or 15 years to get all the permits and all the access codes and everything else. The Chinese did a maglev train, which goes over 100 miles an hour from uh, was it Peking to Shanghai? Beijing, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, Beijing. Okay. I felt Peking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, like good maybe you can confirm this or not. I don't know. But they they built this already in three years. They yeah. just went through and. They were also talking about building that high speed railway directly to Europe. Um, that's like the next generation. Yeah. Right, real well, yeah. one belt, one road business, to make it yeah. a but super they, shot they, all the way. They, they can do that because they avoid what we have here is the process of doing any improvements. It's good to be authoritarian. It's good to be authoritarian. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, it's, it, it's not quite that way right now. It is more of a committee leadership there. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's enough. That's it for you. No, I don't want to get into politics. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we need to get off stock. Okay, so, so is that it for you? Yes, that's interesting. Rick, you're next. Yeah. I agree with Tom. I think we should be going for uh, cars powered by natural gas, you know, not electricity. 
Which I guess makes a lot more sense that we've got we've got a glut of it. But mostly it's it's not doing anything. It's break it's, off. Yeah. That's what's so sad. Yeah. They're yeah. just burning it off. Yeah. Anyway, um, since March, about three quarters of my money has been managed by Fidelity. During that time, they've made me a little bit less than 2%, which is not spectacular, but it's been a very smooth ride. They have given me what I asked for. I said I want a very defensive portfolio, one that's not going to get cut off at the knees if we have a, a big correction or a crash, and so that's what I have. And it, the nice thing is it sort of frees me up to be a little bit more confident in my retirement portfolio and my individual portfolio. Have you looked at Fidelity Go? Go? Fidelity. Fidelity came out with a new product by Schwab. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a program now which they just introduced called Fidelity Grow. And you put in some parameters that you want to assume some risk, and they'll come up with a auto trading. So they're going to like a robo advisor. Thing. Yeah, but but it's not like Schwab where you put your money in and that's it. What they do is they ask you questions on your risk, the care for risk, your age, and a few other things, <coughs> and they have several categories where you, they manage the portfolio. But well, in theory, money. that's that's what they've done for me, except but with they're paying commissions. Except yeah. with mostly active management. Yeah. yeah, and the difference is to compare the two with your yeah. broker. Yeah. yeah. Wait. And what's the standard deviation, right? Like you got, even though you said, oh, it's safe and modest growth, but the market overall has been going up a significantly higher. So if later just tracing that, but giving you a small percentage of that cut. You think you're getting modest growth, but how do you know the downside is actually protected, right? Since we're not being tested with the downside. Yeah. Well, a very defensive actually, posture, actually, I think. Actually, it gets very small down. Right? In the case of uh, really. Yeah, so that's why I'm interested. What's the standard deviation uh, of the. Do you know what it is? Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, know. Know. Yeah, I don't cause, know. I don't know. It doesn't seem terribly yeah. volatile. Because in right. August, uh, at least we have two. Okay. If you look at SP, right, in August, like. There's uh, two, uh, two times I think it's like North Korea and then some other uh, Eastern <coughs> tier. Where Wait, the overall market tank. So if you just look at these two days, like how much were you impacted? Yeah, then you have to really understand right? you know, how yeah. much downside. Well, it's forward. mostly bonds actually. Bond, oh, okay. Bond yeah. 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 All right. So anyway, oh, on my own accounts, I haven't done anything. I mean, it seems to be working pretty well. So I don't have any strong impulse to buy or sell anything. All right. And that's what we want to know what you think. That's, thanks for sharing that. It's okay. That's it. All right, Andrew. I'm glad to have ladies here. We're always glad to have ladies. And thank you for coming. Okay. Well, I've been sitting in and this is my, I've never done stocks, but I'm ready to start. Does anyone have any advice on where would I go to start? Day one. Depends how much money you got, right? Uh, some people recommend, you know, if you have 10,000, for instance, such as the SPY, for uh, yeah. Well, Paul, you see, to your left is the, the, the advisor. Sorry, I defer. No, 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 right. to the gentleman no, from. Uh, it's, it's, first question is: Are you maxing out your four hundred one k? No. That's step one. That's it. It's You're right. Out. That's it. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I don't know what your four hundred one k offers, but that's always step one. Okay. Sure. Max out your four hundred one k. After that, there's a whole oodle of questions about what are your checks, so how much about your time, about training, all kinds of things. And generally, the answer is going to be different for every person. Yeah. Uh, you said max? I'm sorry. Yeah. Personally, I do um, the minimum matching that your company or my company offers, and then I just do that. I don't try to max out my 401k or just because um, I, and all of that is in Roth. Right, so 
um, especially for long-term positions, you're not too concerned about capital gain at that point. It's 15%, right? So if you do, even in your personal investment account, long-term, you have more control over what you're actually investing instead of what your com company gives you the limited uh, option. So for me, I like being able to have the control. And so therefore, I just match the minimum my company matches and then due diligence on the risk of that money. Okay, I'm an entrepreneur too, so I am the company. <laughs> so right now, I do have the raw. Yeah. yeah, so. Well, you should be doing SAP, the self-employed IRA, okay. gives you the maximum amount of money that you can invest. If you're doing a raw, you're limited to what is it, five thousand dollars a year, whereas a, a SEP IRA, uh, you could be doing twenty five thousand. So, so Bobby, beyond that, so let's say she has an imaginary hundred thousand dollar portfolio. How would you diversify that? Depends on. I have to ask a whole lot of questions. So, to get well, if, if you have a moderately uh, moderate adjustment to risk, uh, you are risk averse, or you. Are, like some uh, moderate risk of growth? Uh, you gotta I'll listen be to him because he's an ex broker. Right. <laughs> no, no, I see how much there are questions. So, right, she right, has some questions, so I'm trying to focus those questions so we can maybe yeah. get that what she yeah. is, uh, whether she's risk averse or something. Well, if you're an entrepreneur, you're obviously not risk averse. Uh, I mean, right. That's the highest risk right. endeavor you could possibly. Take on. I mean, uh, you know, Vietnam was safer than than being a, an entrepreneur. Uh, no, we said Vietnam was safer than being an entrepreneur. <laughs> 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 no, I do a few. I do. I have a film production. Um, also do commercial real estate with another company, and then I have a green cleaning company. There you go. So, uh, so anyhow. Do you, do you, I'm sorry. Did you say you have a other company like in properties? No, I do. I do a commercial. I'm a commercial realtor. I just start doing that. Okay. But I have a green cleaning company, and I direct and produce films. Have because you set up set self employment. I have with Edward Jones. Mm -hmm. Edward Jones. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You sure I did? Because you said you had a Roth, but yeah, I have you a, didn't I have a Roth. Set. Okay, yeah, I have a Roth, and I was actually doing that with employees, but then I have. One for myself too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because have you have you looked at real? Uh, have you have you that in the SPY? Okay. Have you have you looked at REITs then? Because you're somewhat involved in. What? I've started because y'all were talking about it. I started looking into it. Because your field is somewhat in that, isn't yes. it? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Get get do it with something you know. In other words, right? Like okay. REITs and that kind of thing. Now, what I was really quickly just uh, getting into is diversification. So we've given you the advice. 401k, yeah, but what do I do? Where do I put that money, right? And so you can put, let's say, broadly speaking, 25% to small small funds, uh, small ETF, I don't know if your 401k offers those. 25%, 25%, 25%, or 20, 20, 20% of that might be an EEM, like an emerging markets ETF. Like you wanna be uh, uh, invested in international EEM, or VWO is the other uh, international emerging markets. IVV, large stocks, IWM is small caps, IWM, right? So you do a, a, a portion of that, we can talk about it later. Okay. But, you know, uh, I mean, do you have time to learn? Yeah. You, okay, if you have time to learn, you should read Barron's. Just, not that, that the it's, the, the, yeah, it, because it just educate, it, well, it, it's like reading, let's say, the New York Times or Washington Times but in finance, and so you're reading what's going on. Okay. And then I would recommend two to once a week or, or once a month on Saturday by uh, Investor's Business Daily, the one on Saturday. The reason I say that particular one is because what they do is they rank all the sectors. So I think there's like 30 sectors in the, and all the companies that are in the sector. So it, sector one is doing the best at that time so again that just gives you an idea a snapshot what's going on in the market <laughs> if you really want to get into it you uh the guy william o'neill who's founded this newspaper 
he uh, has tapes or CDs and you can follow his strategy and his strategy is always buying companies going up and he gets out immediately if they go down four or five percent so I mean that's so John, here's a, one strategy that's here's yeah here's a URL for investors.com right there Investors.com. Well, I was, yeah, I was doing IBD. Okay, that's it, IBD. So it. Yeah. So, IBD I mean, that's just learn. I mean, these are ideas to learn. Yeah. You said Wayne O'Neill? William O'Neill. William O'Neill. Yeah, O'Neil. yeah. but if you go on his site here, they'll mention him, and you can listen to his strategy <laughs> if you want to. So something else that is specific for companies is that um, every single company has an investor relations department. So if you know individual companies that you feel that has pretty good potential, let's say you work in the retail or uh, I mean, REIT. Uh, what's it called? A commercial real estate world, and you notice certain companies, it's gaining traction and has good potential. You can look up if it's publicly traded, and if it is, you can find the investor's relation. Just Google the company's name, investor relation, and then you get the page. You click on it, and they have all the publicly publicly available information about the business, including the balance sheet, how they're operating, uh, and all of that. And then from there, you can actually analyze it like how you will analyze your own company. Um, so that's a little bit more specific. So you, uh, and it's also the facts, right? So you analyze it as you would if you were to analyze the business and not have to worry about what other people are saying. Okay. Hey, real quick, does that work for uh, private companies as well? Uh, public comp uh, private companies don't need to disclose as much information to the public, so it doesn't really work unless you know people inside who's willing to share. But they're private, so yeah, they don't have to disclose anything. And what Wei's saying, that strategy, that uh, fidelity, you know, you've heard the term fidelity. The fellow that founded that, Peter Lynch, back in the 70s and 80s, he would say the same thing invest in something you know. He used to go and ask his wife what she thought was at the malls. What did she like? What does she see people buying? Are they going into Claire's stores or whatever? And it gave him ideas. So what he's telling you is a, is a strategy. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is that it for you? Yep. All right. Oh, you're next. Well, since what I do doesn't Relate to anybody else. Uh, <laughs> oh, <hello. laughs> okay, but well, then let's, how's the update on your house situation? Well, I'm here. Uh, okay, that's great news. And uh, I'm a year and a half past my expiration date, so uh, uh, every day is a good day. <laughs> how, how, how are the gold futures doing? In the, uh, uh, well, gold uh, took a little bit of a dip recently, yeah, and, yeah. which uh, has been all right for. What I do, I mean, it's so some uh, calls on that. I mean, individual days, the last two days, gold cost me a lot of money, but that was just giving back what it made Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So, you know, <coughs> talk about volatility. What I do, uh, you know, 5% in a week, up or down, is not unusual. <laughs> so, so, Paul, I, I know that you don't. Uh, not a, you're not a directional trader that much, but <coughs> you see that uh, gold, gold did take quite a move up. I think it's reaching sort of an intermediate base here, or will we'll no continue idea. continue down a little bit more? I have no idea. Okay. I mean, that's one thing that I look at the, yeah. the ranges that it's been in. Yeah. I look at support levels to see, do I need to take defensive action in case it breaks the support level? or breaks a resistance level. But other than that, in terms of where it's going to go over the next three months, is yeah, irrelevant. It seems kind of like got strong support in the mid-120s, I guess, at this point. Yeah. So, so, uh, okay. This, this this yeah. Yeah, this, the strategy I've noticed that actually worked for me is, in gold is that uh, if you believe that gold never go to, go to zero and you have the capital, Keep buying it, keep right. buying it, keep buying it. Eventually, sure. it's going to come up. Because these pockets are a lot of these. One thing about gold or any other commodity right. is all you can do is speculate. Yeah, in, exactly. It is not an investment. You have mm -hmm. to remember. Yep. It's not an investment. Yep. An investment either uh, has earnings mm -hmm. or it 
pays rent. <coughs> Somewhere or other, it makes money. Yep. No commodity can make money. You can make money by it going up in price, or you can short it, and you make money by it going down. You cannot buy and hold yep. commodities. They rot. Yep. Uh, they have storage costs. Uh, lots of factors that go into it. You can only speculate in it. Which speculator, case? thank you very much. Uh, hmm. Done very well with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and has Go not uh, an investment? Did, did Go react to the shooting that was happening um, in Las Vegas? Did that trigger any panic that people? No. I have no idea why it does anything that it does, uh, and I don't even bother to read Kitco okay, anymore. So where you see the chart uh, that they have going down. They going down last five days, uh, last uh, month. Last five days. This is gold miners versus gold. Uh, there's a little spike there, maybe in the shoot. Yeah, I guess the guy might have sold all his gold before he did the shooting anyway. So he uh, <laughs> stopped out. Yeah. Yeah, gold is part of your cash position yeah. if you have gold. I don't think it's he not figured he anything else. could you use the cash where he was going. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, next lady, yeah. Marie. Marie, yeah. Marie. Um, well, I'm kind of real late to the you know stock market going up so high party, so I'm just waiting for it to drop about 10% and then start to jump in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think long, the country's gone through a lot this year. I think long after Harvey, Maria, the shooter in Vegas, and Nate are forgotten, I think there are two big elephants in the room that are coming up quickly that may have an effect on the market. And one of those things, in a few weeks, uh, Trump's going to probably announce who he's appointing to the Fed. That's going to be a biggie. And I think also uh, the other thing is, uh, I woke up at four in the morning to say that Treasury bonds have uh, uh, gone up, yields have gone down, people are jumping, leaving the market a little bit, going to these Treasuries, because I think Kim Jong Un has announced now he's got a missile that can hit the United States and they're going to be testing it very shortly. So, you know, that's kind of, those are the elephants in the room. So we'll see what happens, I guess. Okay, and that's what we want to know what you so say. When we get the ten percent off, I can start to buy. <laughs> All right. So is that it for Emory? That's Don, you're next. I didn't do anything this week. <coughs> okay, go to the corner where it does count. Okay. Uh next <laughs> I only like to recommend things I think are in a good position to buy, kind of like you're saying. Um, and most of my stocks have been quite well, not, not to brag, like it's, I've lost my mind before. Um, I have, most of my positions are in defense type stocks. Uh, I've rotated from just like mainstream US equity into like companies like Lockheed Martin and Boeing and Raytheon. I did that back when Trump shot the first missile at Syria. And I thought that was a good signal that things were not going well. Uh, and so those have done. Most of them are around like fifteen percent from that time. I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying them now, um, so that's really help you. Um, but the one that's kind of related to that that's uh, I think might be an okay to him to buy. I'm concerned uh, putting more in that position um, is I have it's uh, relates to a commodity actually is the uranium ETF U R A I think it is maybe U R I I'm not sure but that's a college. Or Try URA. Yeah, 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 it's that one. Uncle Roger, it's, URA, it's URA, I think. Try that one. I think it's URA, uh, pretty sure. It's yes, URA. Um, URA. It's a global. Okay. There's a uranium ETF I have. It's URA. What? Oh, sorry. Is, is it the UEC? Yeah. UEC uh, is the one I. Yeah. It's, yeah, a, it's an ETF. I think yeah. it's URA. That's global. Global, but I don't know those. Well, I, I have some uranium ETF that I bought. <clears throat> when did you buy it? Uh, I don't know, like, like three months ago or so. I, I picked it up when, because like, Van Eck, uh, yeah, it's like the Van Eck one, yeah. Okay, it's probably that. NLR, uh, no, that's not what I have. But it's new, uh, uranium related, obviously. Well, I mean, it's all the same stuff. I, if that's the one I have, but you're in the shade of it. Okay. The reason I point out was uh, uranium has, has gone down a ton, uh, like in the last ten years. Uh, I recently had some some excitement around like nuclear weapon stuff, 
Um, and then some of that excitement's actually subsided, and so now it's uh, back at a place where I can start picking up more. It's kind of gone down, nothing. Uh, it's a bit speculative, but if you're thinking that there's more concerns with Kim Jong-un and stuff like that, um, I think now would be a good time to pick up on that before more hysteria starts. Um, yeah. yeah, I would also like to throw in something. It's the, that's a lot of tension internationally, but I feel like a lot of tension in the country itself we might actually look into like gun stocks or ammunition stocks because that's something we, a lot of people I think right now are considering getting them to yeah. for self defense and protect the family in case some rocket does land somewhere in the US <laughs> and somehow electricity gets wiped out. You got to fend for yourself and your food and your farm. Yeah, supply chain <laughs> disrupted and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so so something like like what's it called like RGR. What's it called? There? Probably like Smith and Wesson or somebody else. Yeah. Well, they <laughs> apparently, uh, I've heard when we have these shootings, like Smith and Wesson goes up because they're afraid, yeah, people well, are yeah, afraid they're going to lose their guns, yeah. and so they grab more guns. Yeah. And that and that stock seems to go up after, uh, that's a trend. Yeah. And well, now they're afraid they're going to use lose their automatic or semi-automatic weapons, I guess. That's probably where they're Well, they, they, well I mean, it's just, it's just a pattern, you know, because of other disasters we had like that, that the... That stock has done well Climb, afterwards. Climb. Yeah. But, up, you know, it's a... yeah, but and then there's another one called OLN. That's a uh, Olin Corporation. They sell ammunitions, um, so they, they do, do very well. Too, yeah. yeah, they do very well because if no matter what, uh, wow. they, they used to make oil <laughs> yeah. or something, didn't they? No, I think they've always they, they do ammunition. No, they did make yeah. oil. I have like oil cans. I've seen yeah. my grandparents that say Olin on. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so uh, I got into the Maybe they did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do chemical as well. So oh, they do chemical, a lot of chemical. Well. Yeah, 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 chemical. So they do uh, powder and um, a bunch of other stuff. There's so yeah, so that's another one that, I mean, no matter what guns you use, you need ammunition. Yeah, I did serve a uh, <laughs> What was the <laughs> shooting last night? What was the shooting last night? I fell up on the ammo. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. The weekend. Oh, it was yeah, the weekend. It was the middle of the week. It was in Vegas, so they party every night. But here's the uh, beautiful Monday, run up that right there is when it happened. Monday, Monday uh, right after, after the first yeah, thing. I think it was Monday. I think. Monday. Yeah, that's where you see that run up right there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, is that it then for you? Uh, not much to say. Yeah. Okay. Is, is it Glenn? It's Glenn. So I've been wondering about um, oil stocks. Um, I bought some BP. Few weeks back, so okay, that's they, pretty quiet. They well. kind of went up, and and they've been kind of hovering. And I don't know where they're, where they're going to go. They do have a nice dividend, so I thought I'd maybe just hold on to it. Okay. Yeah, almost nice. seven. Oh, it's all yeah. going on. Oh, what do you think? Yeah. It's interesting. So, what else is on their operations? Okay, is that it then for you, Glenn? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in this room, here. Yes. I, I, I want to change the subject a little bit because you have quite a few knowledgeable people here, and Bill is a, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wong, he has nice videos and I watched his videos. I, I have a question about the options. Can I ask a question like, when you see a car like this, a bit, as how do you choose from that? Are you buying or selling? Oh, is that how it well, the, the, the bid is what somebody is willing to pay you for it. The ask is, um, when you got to pay it, you buy it. Yeah, so how do you, you just click on that? Right, so you go for the lowest. Price? Well, it's it's you feel sort of like an auction, it, it's somewhere in between the low and the high. And if they're buying it, you want to get the lowest price, which is the bid. Big bid. And if they're selling it, you want to get the highest price, which is the ask. So what you try to do is find something in between, so both people. Yeah. Have so it. Well, How do you find in between that? Well, figure the price that you're willing to pay for it if you're buying, or you're willing to sell it for if you're selling. And it's up so to you, you if to choose it. the price. In your, in your whatever platform you're using to trade, when you click on a 
bid, it's gonna list up the option. You can adjust the price wherever you want to buy well, or sell. If you highlight that column, yeah, it but gives I'm, you the price. Yeah. Right, sir. So you don't have a choice on this. Let's let's just clarify. You have a choice. You're going to purchase one contract of Apple. A call you're going to purchase them because you think Apple is going to double in a week. So you will purchase the 150 call, and you'll see a bid and an ask. The bid would be ten dollars. Well, ten cents. The ask would be twelve cents. Are you purchasing that call? Yes, you are purchasing. So you're going to pay the higher price. The ask. You're going to pay twelve cents, not the bid. Okay. Now when you sell it. You made it 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, twice your money, two times your money next week. It's now that that call is twice, you know. You're going to sell it as a bid and ask. You're going to get the lower of the two, the bid. You're going to sell that the bid. No choice. Simple so, we, yes, you always have a choice because you can <laughs> always place a limit order. This is true. This is you true. can determine this the true. price this is true. This that true. makes sense. This is true, to but, you. but if you want to set it at the market pretty much, it's the bid or the ask. Depending on how bad you want to get rid of it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But to simplify, just to simplify both, what would happen? Because he's a little confused about that. But if you have a bid and ask, you're going to, you're going to sell it at the lower of the two, which is the bid. And if you want to buy it, you're going to buy it at the higher. It's the same so for you the stock. You click on that, you highlight that, and you click on it. Is that how you buy? Depends on the platform. Yeah. 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 Automatically, I think you're talking about buy platform specific yeah. stuff. That's what I'm saying. I, I, you know, I, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> Unrelated question like that. Uh, and so, so this is an important point. So, so when you buy calls and, and, and stuff on, on options, you want to get very liquid uh, instruments, uh, op options that are traded in large amounts. Because the larger the amounts that are they trade on, the closer the bid and the ask card. You'll notice that Apple very widely traded. It's only about a penny apart. The bid will be ten, ask is eleven. Very little difference, one cent the minimum that you can have. If you trade a very lightly traded stock, XYZ, trades a few times, you have a wide one. Your bid will be at 10 and your ask will be at 20. That means you buy a call, you're going to have to buy, pay 20, and then you sell it the next day, you're going to have to sell it at a much lower price because the bid and the ask are so wide. So, so go with a very uh, heavily liquid. Liquid instruments like the Apple's, the Facebook's, the uh, uh, stocks that trade million million shares a day or what? Mr. Wong, he he's an engineer and he has his own video there. Very, very smart guy. Very yeah, very smart guy. I'm gonna try to ask him questions. They were a whole of the class too long. But okay, well, I guess he you can probably can, yeah, can you check his after. email? You want to email him? Uh, yeah, we can for, talk after. for questions or yeah, yeah. Well, book yeah. either way, yeah. So I asked question to him. I asked question to Hector last week, and he told me that. So that's how I pick up pieces. And obviously, you thought Wei was more smart than I was, but which is right. So he is his smart. Yeah. <laughs> you are, I, I, mean, I think any, anybody is smart. It's just, you know, you put enough time in there, you learn right, right there. Yeah. You're better looking, too. Why is that? 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 Why Okay, fair enough. Uh, Sam, I, you're next, huh? Okay. Uh, what was said about uh, Shopify? Uh, oh, that was uh, what I mentioned that. about the uh, Citrin Research talked about right. potential um, Ponzi scheme or scam or. What do you um, think? Um, I think uh, the advertisement is a little bit misleading and maybe pumping the stock in the middle of the business in a bit, but um, if they're generating money from their current business model, um, without generating money. So if you just look at the balance sheet, it's, it's, yeah. you know, it looks like they're uh, going to be profitable, but um, they might need to change up um, their marketing scheme a little bit. Uh, based off what the, um, the Citrus Research said, that uh, they essentially paid a lot of YouTubers or media people to um, say, oh, you can be a millionaire by uh, wholesaling with us. And um, so a, a, a lot of uh, other um, disclosure essentially don't even mention anything about I am sponsored 
to save his spy Shopify. So um, yeah, so the, uh, the research group thinks it's a little bit unethical, and also the company is overvalued, and uh, the SEC might be looking into this, just like how they did with Herbalife, and all of that, so that possibly can I, I told them too that uh, our buddies, the fools, are, are going to research this, but they're concerned that they haven't done a buy signal. But if they think it's bad, because a lot of people, the yeah. clients are in it, they'll send us out. And okay. We can tell yeah. them. We can tell yeah. them and when that's we get exactly that email. Short sellers too, right? They don't want to induce panic, so it crashes as quick, quickly as you can, and then they make a profit in like seconds. Citron isn't always correct. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I, I just mentioned that to put it on people's radar. Yeah. Okay, so is that the yeah. story, Sam? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I got something else I oh, wanted yeah. to ask. Um, you hold Alibaba, correct? Yes, okay. I do. Oh, yeah. uh, Alibaba, yes, I have been yeah. holding yeah. the stock and uh, it's doing really well. Yeah. And uh, I'll keep it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, so I know, I remember um, Costco, just like uh, back in 2013 or something, they were talking about breaking into the Chinese market through Alibaba. Is that still, what, what's going on there? No. I, okay, uh, you haven't heard anything? No. Um, okay. I yes. mean, um, I, I read about it, but uh, about Alibaba stock, I don't change my, my position at the top. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because Costco also just had their earnings announcement. I think this weekend it was exceptionally well. But, um, because Costco, outlook, yeah, they yeah, got yeah. downgrade from I think JP Morgan or something. Yeah, like, uh, Costco. There are a lot yeah. of other things going on with Costco. I think, like you know, uh, whether it is U.S. market or anywhere, because Amazon is taking some of its. Uh, things. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> that's what my feeling. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, uh, because Amazon is coming up with so many other things, it's coming with the, yeah. uh, their own um, wow. delivery service, their own trucks, their own uh, things, and uh, they already um, changed the pricing of a lot of food items, uh, all groceries and everything. So it's uh, it's Amazon effect is uh, unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah, Gary? Uh, yeah, look at the Costco. Look at this gap over here. Yeah, that, that was Friday. Friday. That's a major gap. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. that's uh, being affected by. Uh, well, as Wei said, it's a forecast. Uh, it's a um, um, full forecast. Yeah, they, but is that a buy opportunity, you think, Wei? Uh, I actually bought. And sell some the, costs. Yeah, and I, I actually, that? yeah, that's something else I bought. Uh, I bought the uh, Costco. I still put at 155 and bought a car at 155. So, yeah, very yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, do you want to comment there? I was going to ask you, Hank, too. Is that is there where you. Do an option call when you drop like that? As Wei said, you know, you want to sell, if you feel that Costco has a future here and it's been oversold, you want to sell, not buy, but sell a put. It gives you cash, cash, and then when this goes up, that, that premium decreases no, anyway. Above the, uh, above the gap, when, when oh. it's on a high point. Before you drop, you buy put. Right. Before it drops, oh, if you can time it, by all the puts there is, yes, yes, yes. 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 they do <laughs> gamble. <laughs> it's a gamble. It's a gamble. It's a strategy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Dealing with it's that. a gamble. We have to talk to you about it. It's a gamble. Yeah. But but I'll say like if you have the capital to back up the assignments. Do it that way. Don't try to speculate as in, oh, I think it's going to go out 10 times and then buy the car and then just waste away the premium. Well, sure, the way I generally do it, I always buy in the money because I have, if I do the assignment in the money, it's fine. I can back up the purchase. That's generally that's how I it. That's why it's uh, call, option call or something like that. Yeah, that's just can't look really to me anyway. Is <laughs> <laughs> he talking about Alibaba? Don't they have something else come on call? Alibaba or something like yeah, that? The, yeah, the Apple yeah. Uh, alternative. What, what, is, what is going on with that? Uh, that's, I thought that was totally, I remember, uh, what's his name? Uh, Nazar mentioned about that. That's yes, yeah. they sold. Does it the Yahoo? Um, oh. Uh, oh, and, oh, and, oh, oh, money or yeah, yeah. the Yahoo deal or something? Yeah, once Yahoo oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, was yeah. consummated by Alibaba. Okay, Sam, I guess is that was it for you, right? Yeah, that's it, yeah. Oh, who mentioned Workday? 
Uh, I told you that this, the fools, oh, okay. the fools, I, I, I try to, yeah. uh, he's in with fools too, yeah. he's sort of here so more than I do, I but, it, yeah. but they oh, said, so it, you're he, on the priest, John no, 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 don't, I'm on the super no, yeah, I'm he knows more than I do, oh, okay. <laughs> But uh, but uh, they send out an email on Fridays, and, and one of their brothers recommended W's Day. Okay. Work day is pretty big time. Okay, then is that it? That's it. Paul, oh, we're back over to you. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you to uh, <laughs> uh, replace Sam Gillum with somebody who's um, more beholden to, to President Trump. That would be easy money for how many years? Four years? I don't know. I mean, I think Trump really has pretty much, I think he's going to keep the interest rates as low as he can. Yeah, so yeah. I, I really don't think, and, and you know, Yellen has kept them very low. So even though he originally said he would replace her, I think somebody who would replace her with would probably have, you know, be moving those at glacial rates. I, I just don't see them going up. If that interest rate goes up, if the interest rates today were 5%, you better believe, in my opinion, anyway, this market wouldn't be anywhere near because there are so many people, baby boomers, retirees, they'd be happy to get 5% and not take any of this risk. That's what I think. So I think Trump, you know, he's a business person. He knows it's going to kill business. If these interest rates go up, he knows it's going to kill the market. That's true. So I just think that, uh, you know, he, whoever he puts in there, they're going to keep those rates as, go as slow as they can. But yeah, I guess if inflation hits, maybe they do have to move them a little faster, but who knows. I mean, all these central banks are working together. The Asia Central Bank, the ECB, it's such a global market, it's not like years ago. So everybody's on the same page around the world, keeping these rates way low. Yeah. How about tax reform? Do you think that's a it may have a little effect, but I think, you know, I, I think this tax reform thing is going to be another great big fight. I, I feel like it's already priced in, into the market. It's already priced in. Yeah, I think, <laughs> since the election, the reform of the tax cut is, the tax cut is. Oh, I'm sorry, the tax <laughs> Because reform is probably not going to happen. Okay, yeah. Tax cuts. Paul, well, is that it for you? Yeah. And uh, John, you have some stuff you want Well, this is, this is the email I got. These are the five stocks that Brother Tom recommended. And that, I told you guys about this one, but those are other ones. But that seemed like the most. I like IRBT, iRobot. Oh, yeah. So, John, is this your friend who also recommended AT&T the other day? And, uh, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is the tool. This is this is the mock of fools. I, I get oh, a, oh, I, I get them. I get a very low end subscription. He's gotcha. a client with them, so he knows. So he can say seven year higher. You're the, the big, big <laughs> so he can tell you, but that's why he knew some header. of those. But sure. but uh, the other thing, uh, Chris Swada has moved his show to um, nine eighty a.m. That's the station, and it's on at 7 a.m. on Saturdays. Um, he's, you know, he's a value, value, value investor, quote unquote. But uh, he's on FM 980 AM, uh, 7 a.m. He does do a he does do a podcast, um, and um, his, you know, again, he's a different take than the Motley Fools and gang. He. He believes uh, he gave an example like you know Facebook's a great company, so but it's nine eighty. Nine eighty. Yeah. What time? Uh, seven o'clock. What day? Today. <laughs> Saturday. Yeah, apparently not the. Uh, and and um, he uh, he was saying you know like Facebook's a great company, but is Facebook going to be around thirty years from now? And his his viewpoint is like he's he's with the oils, he's yeah. with the utilities, really, really. he's with the items that he thinks will be here as long as man is here. So. He's not done so well probably this past two or three years. Right, right. Uh, he did well maybe eight years ago, but but that's just another source to think about, you know, another strategy. Yeah, the, he's, a, uh, he's a value investor. Yeah. yeah right. that, that, uh, one chart, if you have, everybody's done, like that one. Yeah, open it up to everybody. So no, I have that one more thing to show up. Uh, Again, Schaefer's investment research that I opened up with this. <coughs> These are the best stocks in October. This is some momentum play, temporary play for a couple months, but <coughs> historically, if 
you were to purchase this company, which I know nothing about, SAFT insurance, 100% positive in October. <laughs> Pretty good money that you've been at. Um, and you'll have a return of that amount in October. So you can maybe look at these companies and judge for yourselves whether they merit your investment. And um, I sold some puts on SAFT. The other ones uh, I'm not too familiar with, but uh, uh, if you want to play the odds, uh, that's something to look at. Uh, I did tell you about this particular small small account that I have with, with uh, options, talking about options selling. And, um, it's uh, generated, you know, 45%, I mentioned that before, a small account of since March, uh, and strictly selling calls and puts, mostly puts. Um, of course, the market has gone up, but it's returned about 45%. I, I should have uh, tripled my account size there, but um, but that's one thing about options, right, Paul, is when you, it's okay when you do small numbers of options at a time, but when you want to sell 100 contracts at a time, the fills get a little bit stranger, right, Paul? Well, you got to have an awful lot of money, like Tom does to have that. But uh, yeah, the, the fills are a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, 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 but it's a, it's a strategy. But um, I think I loved, um, you know, UPS and FedEx got a little bit of a hit, not too much, from Amazon coming out with uh, with uh, this this announcement that they are going to have their own delivery service by by flight. So FedEx and UPS took a little time. You might see there's a buying opportunity, UPS and FedEx. But so that's all, I'll leave it at that. All right, so I guess that's it then. Or this I own you know, SAFT, I've had it for 10 years, and I've made 20%. That was a good. I'm sorry, what's that? I said I owned it for two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, the, the top one. Uh, is it, uh, oh, the the bottom. Okay. Stamp. Yeah, okay. That's a full. That's a good full. That's a full. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Does anybody have a good book that the new uh, investors legal. might look at? Consideration. I'm sure it must be around. Uh, uh, what kind Vince, of Vince has a book. Uh, he. What kind uh, of you Gary, he, he wanted yourself. to share. You, okay. can, you might want to send him an email. Program, yeah. I, well, maybe I have it. I read The Idiot's Guide to Investing in ETFs. It was pretty good. Okay. Uh, okay. Like okay. Yourself. Yeah. 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 Yeah.